This flesh-eating bacteria, it moves very quickly, and it's very difficult to make this diagnosis early. It's hard to believe how your life can be turned upside down. This is a condition where people can go from just fine to dead within about 24 hours. Just to think how fragile life is. One minute we're all here, and the next minute you can be gone. It was a Friday, and I felt like I was getting a cold. And I'm very stubborn, don't believe in going to doctors. All of a sudden, my left arm just started really throbbing. And then she told me, time to go to the hospital. We got her to the Memorial Hermann Katie, and they got her right in. There's always certain cases where you just get this gut feeling. And in her case, if I just looked objectively at the, the lab tests and the EKG, x-ray, I would think, oh, she looks fine, send her home. I could feel that something wasn't quite right. So I thought the best thing to do was to bring her to the hospital and there may be other symptoms or lab tests that will point us in a certain direction. So he said, we're going to admit you for observation. So we moved her up to the room and her gown slid down on her shoulder a little bit and that's when you could see the rash. Now, she didn't have a rash when she was examined in the ER room. So that was a real rapid uh, onset. I now saw cellulitis and the fact that it wasn't only a, just one red spot, but included most of her shoulder and the upper side of her chest was really concerning. So uh, Dr. Yancey came in to see the patient. Just looking at her, I could see that she was very critically ill. I've never seen my mom look so bad. She looked horrible. She just, she was swollen. She was, she just didn't look like herself. There's no one specific test for necrotizing fasciitis. It's a bunch of hints that you put together. Uh, I knew we needed to get surgery on board right then. We moved very quickly because our suspicion was high that she had flesh-eating bacteria. The infection was spreading very rapidly. We know that we need to get that patient taken care of as quickly as possible. I was holding her hand and she looked up at me and said, am I gonna die? Oh, uh, I didn't know how to answer that. Didn't want to lie to her. When she went to surgery, I didn't know if she'd come back. And then you have the selfish things, the, my kids losing their grandmother, losing my mom, um, my dad not having her. It's a challenging disease to treat because the diagnosis isn't confirmed until you get to the operating room. The tissues were very swollen. We could see there was a lot of fluid in the area, and that's a hallmark of these kind of infections. So uh, once we got in there, it was clear that you know, we were doing what needed to be done right at that time. So everything went very smoothly. Uh, we were able to get the infection under control. We were able to debride any of the dead tissue that was in the area and get her back to the ICU for antibiotics and further wound care. When Dr. Farrow came out, he was very confident that everything was gonna be fine. And that was the first time that I felt like we were gonna get through this. I was so enormously relieved when she came out of surgery. She had incisions on her arm and also on her upper back to make sure that the infection hadn't begun to spread. It's critical that we look at all those areas at least once a day to make sure that the tissue is staying healthy, make sure that the blood flow in the area is good, and make sure that they're beginning to heal. She needed prolonged antibiotics and prolonged wound care. With the help of hyperbarics and the topical treatments, and she was already on antibiotic treatments, her wound bed just always had a positive effect every single visit. She did it. She went to every single treatment. She didn't miss a treatment. After 52 hyperbarics, I was finished. And since then, I started feeling really back to myself. We've been concentrating on uh, spending time together and thankful that we have the time. There's always a few cases you get in your career where later you still think about them and over time kind of change who you are. That's what I love about this specialty is that we get to fix people. Now I don't hesitate to go to the doctor because I know some great doctors. <laughs>